Good morning, my friends. This is Tira Jarvis, and I'm coming to you live with Transformation Tuesday. I run a company called Kefi Coaching, and for those of you that don't know, Kefi is the Greek word for passion, and when I started my business, that was what was calling out to me. So uh, I come here live every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, and we've been talking about mindset, uh, motivation, and transformation. And it's related to this notion of fulfillment and that success without fulfillment, according to Tony Robbins, is the ultimate failure. So um, I have an audio program <clears throat> on my website. It's a free three-part audio program. They're about 20 minutes each where I explore the foundation for fulfillment, some of the key elements that you want to make sure that you have in your life. Um, and if you... Um, and then we talk about some practices that I talk about practices that you need to have to actually live a fulfilling life every day because it's not a someday one day phenomenon that's going to happen down the road. It's something that you experience right away. And I was uh, uh, talking to a friend yesterday and despite all the success, when we really culled it down, the one thing that's missing right now for her is fulfillment. And so one of the practices, I talked a little bit about it last week, uh, in the practices of fulfillment is protecting time and energy. And I've been exploring this the last couple of weeks because um, it's where I'm at. It's where I'm at. It's like, what's going on with my time and what's going on with my energy? And one of my coaches mentioned that, you know, this energy management, if you will, um, is something that, that I need to be working on. And I don't, I didn't really fully understand it. And as I started to look at it, uh, things are starting to become a little bit more clear for me right now. And so that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. And I've got a couple things that have come up this week. Um, but one of the things that I think is kind of interesting is in leadership development, one of the definitions that I heard is that managers do things right. Leaders do the right things. And so I'm applying that to some of these things that we're trying to do as individuals, whether you're a business owner or an entrepreneur or, you know, a, a corporate executive, or if you're just uh, a woman in your life or a, a man in your life that's navigating a career, um, navigating your life, um, what is it that you're trying to manage versus, um, you know, lead or be the leader of your own life. And, and I had somebody once uh, describe it this way, you know, we're affiliated with the Executive Women's Golf Association and their mission is really to teach women to play golf, uh, to take advantage of the full advantages of golf as a networking and business tool. And some, there was some reaction to the term executive and one of my friends said, everyone has their own level of executivity. So I want you to think about that. Whatever you're sitting, this can apply to you if you allow it to apply for you. So when we look at managers do things right and um, leaders do the right things, I'm going to say that that's management and mastery. So management or time management, stress management, um, any of the, the manage, time, <clears throat> I already mentioned time, energy management, all of those are about doing things right and I'm going to be advocating for time mastery and energy mastery. And I talked quite a bit uh, throughout the last couple of years on mindset mastery and motivation mastery and self-motivation. And, you know, when you look at, you know, time and energy, why are they so key? Well, they're the resources other than money. Uh, those are the three resources that you have to do things, create things, get your stuff done, uh, create the growth and the transformation and evolve into the person that you really want to be and have the things in your life that you really want to have. And so when we look at, I'm going to start actually with energy mastery, because as I look at it, time mastery is really one of the things that helps you conserve and reserve and protect your energy. So looking from the standpoint of mastery, what would you need to master energy? Well, the, the very first thing that we want to realize is that this, this fulfillment quest um, or actualization quest, if you will, is a journey. It's a journey. And, you know, you need a vessel to carry you on this journey. And, you know, some say you can't discover new oceans without the courage to lose sight of the shore. Uh, consider yourself on 
on the water, on, you know, in your life, kind of in a vessel. Well, guess what? The body is your vessel. And that's where your energy story is. That's where your ever ready bunny rat battery is, your, your energy, your, um, your source. And it has to be protected and maintained. And how you go about doing that is very, very unique. Because the other thing that I realize is there's a million gurus out there and they all have management techniques that may or may not work for you. And I've been trying them all, you know, I've been trying them all, trying to find the right path for what's the right thing that's going to work for me. And not right in a correct way, the best tool, if you will, for me. And so, but your body is key. And I mentioned last time, you know, we're getting ready to bust loose out of the pandemic and you might have the tendency to want to unload and fill up your calendar and do a lot of things. But for me, I tried online meditation. I tried online yoga. I tried online, you know, training and physical training. I have weights. I have all of it and I was not doing it. And that's because what works for me is having an appointment on my calendar. I've relied on personal trainers over the years. That was a knit during COVID. Um, but I also liked going to the gym and doing group classes and it was a social thing for me. Well, um, the gym that I stopped most recently was Orange Theory Fitness. And thankfully, they opened up again last year. So I re-engaged my membership. And I went and did a workout last Saturday. And I did one on Monday. And I got to tell you, I feel so much better preserving that spot on my calendar for that work. So I've got Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday for the next two weeks um, that I'm going to try to deal with some things and looking at your fuelings and what you eat and making sure you drink your water so that your body is there to deal with whatever's coming up for you and you have the emotions and the mental state and you can actually take on the persona or being state of who you really want to be. So how do you do it your way? You need to understand your best time. And this was fascinating. I'm following and doing a program actually with Amy Porterfield. And she had us listen to a uh, podcast. Because one of the things that takes you out is stress and overwhelm. And so there's a lot of discussion in this space around brain science and what the brain's capable of doing and whatever. And so Amy has a podcast, highly recommended. If Even if you're not interested in having an online marketing business, she has a lot of personal development stuff in her podcast as well. And that's what this, this one was for sure. And uh, she was interviewing a lady by the name of Kate Northrup. And Kate has a new book about less is more and doing less. And that there's actually science behind it. That if you cut back and, and you focus on the, the best things for you or the right things on you, you'll actually be more productive, get more done, create more result in your life, the, the whole thing. And uh, this podcast, highly recommended, amyporterfield.com uh, slash podcast. It's number 262. It's her interview with Kate Northrup. And Kate, uh, and uh, enough so that she has this book that I'm, I'm going to order because I found a fascinating spin on this is that she's done some work that there's actually gender and uh, gender hormone differences between men and women and their best time. And what she shared in this podcast is that men are on 24-hour cycles and it syncs up with the regular seasons that we know, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, you know, summer, spring, winter, fall. Um, but women are on 28-day cycles. Take that in. And that there's a way for us to do certain work in seven-day periods. And I, I want to know more about this because... Daily planning doesn't always work for me. Weekly planning works, works really well. And I work off a weekly plan and I put stuff into the day. But to go through this elaborate process of planning out everything in every day, I don't have the flexibility to deal with some things that come up. And that's not to say to the point of being unproductive. So um, I think it's interesting because when you look at some of the gender biases in the workforce around men and women, the schedules that we have, the 40-hour work week, all of those things came from a very male-dominated um, environment and structure and social structure. And so there may be some things in there that might be really helpful to you. So I, I would encourage you to check out that podcast uh, and, and possibly her book as well. But the goal here is that you need to pace yourself, uh, not to use another metaphor, but a mar it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. 
But, and I've never run a marathon, but I can visualize, I know people that have trained for them, you know, 26 plus whatever miles, you've got to be able to pace yourself. And at some points in that race, you sprint. And at some places, you, when you got to sprint, you're going to have to have some surge protection or some reserve in your tank that's going to allow you to be able to take off there. And so it's all about pacing so that you can sustain momentum on this life journey that you're on. <clears throat> It's not fits and starts and starting over and whatever. And so there's a few things that um, I just really want to kind of have you think about it. And one of them is, you know, whether you're a woman who does too much or you're a guy that does too much, we tend to try to do too much. And in the trying to do too much, we introduce overwhelm and stress into our life. And so uh, I had one coach talk about, you know, do your to-do list and cut it in half and throw out half of it because you're not going to do it and take the other half and cut it down again in half and really get yourself to those really key contributors to the life that you want to have. And I think the Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule, is very relevant here, but we've got to focus on it. You know, 80% um, of your revenue comes from 20% of your clients. 80% of your results come from 20% of your action. Well, you want to be protecting your time so that you have protected your energy. And the best way to do that is to not do so much. Only focus on what you will do. Um, for me, I'm going to be focusing on this weekly plan. And if it's, if it's outside, if it doesn't have to be done now, meaning in that time horizon, if it's something that somebody else can do, I'm going to delegate it. And the really the thing is, does it really need to be done now? If it doesn't, we want to move it. We want to move it off the list. And so when you start to look, there's you know lots of methods and practices and ways to deal with calendars, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those because it's key. But the main thing, and I touched on it last week, is that this calendar that you have right now that got boiled down to only the most essential things when we were most quarantined is now going to start to open up and you're in control of that schedule and you get to say what goes on it and what doesn't go on it and you want to look to your motivation and your why of why you're putting something on your calendar and you want to look with integrity to make sure that you don't say yes to something that you aren't going to be able to do and <clears throat> that you're going to be able to honor your word around it and it's not just word with other people it's word with yourself and as i discovered when we don't honor our own boundaries and promises to ourself with our calendar, we're disrespecting ourself. And so really knowing, you know, and being focused on your goals and focused on those specific, very specific tasks that you're going to do in a given day and making sure that you have time for it are all just a part of the million things that you can do. But it's really going to be finding the right things for you, doing whatever you have to do to sustain momentum whether that's pacing or whatever that is for you. And it's really, I think it's going to come down to really looking and see how you can simplify your life and um, make sure that you're only focusing on the things that you will do that are really going to contribute to whatever that is in your life that you want. And it's really about getting powerful in saying no. No is a complete sentence. It's just a request you know, do you feel that you have to say yes? Do you feel that they won't like you if you don't say yes? That they're going to think that you're not able to do it or whatever? So just remember the power of positive yes. No, yes, no. I appreciate you asking me. Um, I'm not able to do it at this time due to some prior commitments. I'd be open to an invitation in the future. Yes, no, yes. End of subject. No ego, nothing. Just... The, get better at saying no, because saying no is saying yes to you. And anything that you put on your calendar can't be spent twice. 24 hours, 168 hours in a week, 365 hours in a day. So this has really been about protecting energy. I want you to have the energy for you to have your big dreams, to have the courage to try some things new and experiment, to learn new things, and to really overcome the resistance and the friction and not have to use willpower and, you know, using willpower and strong arming things is how you drain your energy and really knowing what those energy zappers are for you. And they're going to be different for everybody. So it's back to really getting in touch with 
what you need and uh, what you want. So check out that podcast, uh, amyporterfield.com slash podcast number 262. It's with Kate Northrup. And check out Kate's book on less is more. I think you'll uh, find some freedom in that for yourself. All right. So with that, um, I'm going to wish you an amazing day and a great week. And I'll see you here next week, Transformation Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. This is Tira Jarvis. Take care. Have a great one. Thanks, Loretta. I appreciate you being here. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.